Hello everybody! Welcome to the introductory series of screencasts on JetBrains MPS. We will gradually go through the basics of how to create a project and how to define languages in MPS. In this first episode we'll learn how to create a new project or how to open a project, how to configure MPS and how to define dependencies between parts of your project. So if you start MPS fresh and new, your screen will look something like this. In, on the left hand side you will see a list of projects you opened recently but most likely it will be empty when you started the first time and then here you've got a couple of options like option to create a new project, open an existing project or open any of the sample projects that come with MPS so you can pick either of them so that you don't have to start from scratch and you, and you can learn from these examples also you should consider checking out the documentation of MPS especially the fast track tutorial if you are new to MPS because this is the place where you can learn the fundamentals in, in 10 steps to guide you through MPS so at the end you should be able to create languages on your own and along the way you'll be doing various exercises that will help you improve the knowledge and get gain some experience with the basic MPS techniques also I recommend you bookmark the MPS user guide because this is the place where you can find all the information about MPS nicely organized and structured okay now creating a new project so pick a project now you've got several options here you can either create an empty project there's nothing in there a, a project a solution project but there's just one solution so basically one module in which you can write code and a language project which is a shorthand for creating a project in which you have a language that you can define as well as a sandbox solution where you can test it right away and perhaps a runtime solution in which you can provide some library classes that will be used by your language. Okay, uh, we'll start with a solution project. So we'll create a new project, give it some name and it will be placed somewhere on the disk and that's all we need to set. So now we got an empty single solution project on the left hand side there's this project view which you open by Alt 1 or Command 1 on Mac and now in here you see this is the project you can Alt enter on on the root node on the project Alt enter is a very useful keyboard shortcut that we will always use to pop up properties of a node in this tree so Alt enter and we get a list of all the modules that are part of the project at the moment it's just one module you know I wanna guide you through the structure a little bit so you understand the the layout of things in MPS so now we've got a project the project has modules at the moment we only have one but with right click we could create another solution or we could create a language that's all we need to know for now okay time to write code how about that so to write code in a module we have to create some code. Code in MPS is structured into models so we create a model. Uh, we can give it any name. So now we have to provide the dependencies. What other models this model should depend on and what languages we should be allowed to use in that model. But we can get back to this later so I close this dialog. So our first model is here. So this is you can think of this as um, package for example in Java basically a way to structure hierarchically your code within a module okay and now we create a hello world example here so for hello world we want to write it in Java so we need to use Java uh, in MPS we've got an equivalent of Java called base language so we need to import that language into our model so we add an import for base language. We no need, don't need other languages. If we, if I open Alt Enter, if I open the properties of this model, we see that base language is listed as a used language. And it should also have been added to the solution because solution is like the container for all models, so whatever the models import, the whatever the models import, the module, the solution has to import as well importing a language is not enough though 
we not only want to be able to use Java, but we also want to be able to see the Java classes that are available in JDK. So for that we have to add a dependency in the module. The module has to depend on JDK. JDK is a solution that wraps the the Java classes that are part of the uh, that are part of the JDK under which you run MPS. So by adding this now you allow all the JDK classes to be available in your code. So now we can create our first class. We can give it a name. Live templates work here. So we've got platic, uh, public static void main method system out print line for hello world now if you hit control F9 or command F9 you run code generation which will take this code and generate it into textual Java and immediately it will run a Java C compiler so you get generated Java byte code generated out of this you may want to preview the generated Java code so if you right click here preview generated text you see the Java source that has been generated from your base language code okay back to the left hand side project view a bit of terminology so I already said well this node represents a project this one represents a module this time it is a solution but we also have a language type of module and a dev kit now inside solutions uh, inside modules you find models and models contain a nodes. The nodes hooked into models are called root nodes because they form root of trees. If you think of each piece of code as a tree, then the root of it, the node at the root that owns the whole tree is hooked here under the model. And you might create several models. So I create a model too. and we'll also make it use base language now that model we can define a class foo and now in demo we would like to create an instance of foo new control space to open completion dialog foo there's nothing in there. That means if you don't see something in the completion menu and you would expect it to be there, it's probably not uh, included in the dependencies. So two things we can do now to get foo. We could go to the model here and say we want to depend depend on model 2. Now I believe we should see foo here. Now we can create new instance of foo. So now we see the class and we can control B or command B on Mac to navigate to definition and stuff like that. Now if I remove the dependency now okay I'm being warned that I'm using that dependency but you know delete anyway. So now this is out of scope. So I remove it foo again control space it's no longer in completion dialog but I can do another trick control R or command R on Mac which means basically find this root concept in some model and offer that model for import so it search for foo found foo in model 2 offers it for import I say yes import so now it should be in scope I do control space I see foo and now model should have a dependency on model 2 as well so it was just the same a different way to add the same entry into the dependencies box we are also able to nest models so we might create a new model model 2 model 3 So this this way you can nest models one within another just like Java packages can be nested. Now you would have to explicitly add a dependency in module in model 2 on model 3 if you wanted to see classes from model 3 in model 2. Okay, so this is this is a way to organize models. 
There's another approach that you can organize things if you don't want to, because models are still somewhat heavyweight, not too heavyweight, but still. So you might, if I create more classes here, so now I've got more classes and I would like to separate them, so I might pick a few of them and set a virtual package on them. It's basically just a property on these root nodes telling them that they should be displayed differently, they should be displayed hierarchically somewhat, you know, elsewhere than those that don't have that virtual package. So demo bar is, is the virtual package I've just created. So now I have, it looks like virtual folders or something in which, you know, the stuff can be uh, sorted. So I can put demo into some into well, let's say demo foo. Now here's I've got a spelling error here, so to fix that, I just rename with shift F6. So now it's all under demo foo and bar. So this is another way to organize elements in your tree. Now remember, you know, I was showing this with, with Java classes and interfaces, but the same way it would work for your DSL root nodes, whatever language you define, this is this is the way to structure your code. And this is universal, it applies to any models and modules in your project. So far I was showing a solution, basically a place where I can write code. Now MPS is famous for allowing you to create languages, so now I'll show you how to create a language, or at least how to create a solution for, langu for language definition. So on the project I right click and say new language. You give it a name and we have it. So this is an empty language definition, there's nothing defined underneath the language. So again, a bit of terminology. A language is an equivalent to solution in terms of uh, being a module. So just like solution is a module, language is a module. It has similar properties, dependencies, use languages, so languages that you can use in, in language, and plus other stuff. And there are models, predefined models in language definition. A model in which you define the structure aspect of the language, a model in which you define the editor, a model in which you define the type system, for example. One exception though, generator. It is not a model, it's a, it's a whole module. It's just logically nested underneath the language, but it is a module, so the properties of generator are similar to properties of any other module, and generators themselves can contain models, generator models. So that's one ex exception to the structure. Now if you create a language and then you would like to be able to use that language in your solution, you would probably guess it, you have to go back to the solution and include that language in used languages. So now this solution should be using new language. So for example, if I create a new concept, I call it my concept and I'll make it a root, give it an alias, hit control F9, command F9 to compile. Now coming back to my solution, if I import that language, if I import the new language into my model, in that model now I will be able to create root nodes for my concept. From new language, you see now the concepts are organized into the languages from which they come. So all the root concepts available in base language are here, base uh, root concepts available in new language are here. So I pick one and here I, here I have it. Here, it's, it's, here is its representation in the AST, here is its editor where I could edit uh, edit the node if, if I properly define the language. Okay, that was an introduction into the project structure in JetBrains MPS. 
Now it is the time to go through all the aspects of language definition in MPS as they are described in the user guide. So in the following screencast we'll cover structure, constraints, behavior, editor, actions, intentions, type system, data flow, generator, and text gen, and maybe a few other aspects that are necessary to define languages in MPS properly. Okay, thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Goodbye.